This historic race gives voters a choice between a candidate who has worked her entire career in state government versus a candidate who never envisioned himself getting into politics until now. Yvonne Holly grew up in Raleigh in what she says was a civil rights neighborhood. Mark Robinson grew up in Greensboro, one of 10 kids in his family. How significant is it, do you think, that uh, whether it's you or your opponent, uh, North Carolina is going to have its first black lieutenant governor? Huge benchmark, huge benchmark in the state. It speaks a lot, speaks volumes for the state, too. Uh, how far we've come and, 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 you know, really how much farther we have to go. But uh, it's a huge, huge deal. Uh, it really is. I've been the first black in a lot of things in my lifetime, you know, <laughs> so it is not a big deal. I am the most qualified candidate who happens to be a black woman, you know, uh, and yes, it is significant. It's because it's overdue. Holly and Robinson disagree over just about every issue but especially over the Black Lives Matter movement. I do believe the Black Lives Matter movement, I think is wonderful because 20 years ago, well, a little bit more than 20 years ago, but uh, that would have been me out here fighting. What is your take on that? What's your perspective of what's happening? Well, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of, of Black Lives Matter the organization because of their political stance. But here's my take on it. I, I really want people to take this moment to stop and breathe deep and look at all the, uh, what essentially ends up being faceless, nameless victims of uh, violence in so many communities around this nation, day after day, um, uh, night after night. It shows these young African-American kids that their voice is being heard. You know, I wanna use their energy and I want to give them my experience and let's do some things to, to bring some quality here to North Carolina. Do you believe that police treat people of color and the white community the same? I do. I've never been treated unfairly by a police officer. Um, I, I know plenty of, of, of people, uh, people, white people, so to speak, Caucasians, who have told me that they've uh, had uh, several run-ins with uh, police officers. But myself, I've never had any run-ins. My brothers and sisters never had any run-ins. Do you believe that police treat people of color and the white community the same? No, you know, they do not. You know, I mean, don't tell me you don't see color. I see color every day. You know, uh, I don't think, now let me say this, they are really good police officers and I know many of them and many of them here are in my community. But you know, they too are human and they have biases and they don't have the kind of training. These two black candidates don't even agree on what to do with North Carolina's Confederate monuments, which continue to divide communities here in the Piedmont, such as Lexington and Graham. I understand that there were some very bad intentions when those statues were erected at the time when they were correct, erected. But I think what we need to do is we need to leave those things as a monument, not to where we were, but to how far we've come. What is it that North Carolina should do at this point in time about the Confederate monuments? Well, you know, I have a personal problem with the monuments. Uh, you know, I grew up looking at them. You know, uh, uh, I knew what they were there for. But it needs to be put in an appropriate venue. It can be put in some parks or special facilities that are set aside for these monuments uh, of that era. North Carolina's lieutenant governor serves as the president of the Senate and can determine the fate of critical legislation when acting as the tie-breaking voter. What would that critical legislation be in your mind? First, Medicaid expansion, Medicaid expansion, Medicaid expansion. That's first and foremost, you know, that would be the first thing that I would love to, to do. The lieutenant governor sits on the state school board and education is one of the things that I'm absolutely most passionate about in this state. Uh, bringing a conservative voice to the uh, State Board of Education is one of the things that I definitely want to do. Robinson has never run for political office. Holly has served in the legislature for the past eight years. Both of these candidates have raised just under $300,000 for this race. Bill O'Neill, WXII, 12 News.